Hello and welcome. My name is Eddie Ambler. In this demo, we will go through how to use the OCI console to enable DataGuard on a VMDB system. Let's get started with enabling DataGuard for a database on a VMDB system by opening the navigation menu. Click on Oracle Database, then click on Oracle Base Database VM. On the left rail, validate that the compartment chosen contains the DB system with the database for which you want to enable Oracle Data Guard for. Click the name of a DB system that contains a database you want to assume the primary role for. For our demo, we will select My Demo DB Sys Prod 1. This will bring up the DB Systems Details page. On the DB Systems Details page, scroll down to the database section and click on the name of the database you want to make primary. For our demo, we will select My19C CDB. This will bring up the database details page. On the left rail under resources, click on Data Guard Association. In the Data Guard Association section, click Enable Data Guard. This will bring up the Enable Data Guard Configuration Input page. On the Enable Data Guard page, create the new PRDB system for the standby. Start with entering a user-friendly display name to help you easily identify the resource. For our demo, we will enter My Demo DB Sys Prod 2 for the standby display name. Next, we will select the region and availability domain for our standby database that meets our availability objectives. For our demo, we will create a local standby by selecting the same region as the primary database for the new PeerDB system. Note that the region is pre-populated with the region of the primary database, but that we could have chosen any region for which we have service entitlement. For the availability domain of the new PeerDB system, we will select Ashburn AD2. Note that the availability domain of the primary database is noted for you on the screen. Under Select a Shape, note that you can select a different shape for your new virtual machine DB system that will contain your standby database. Let's click on Change Shape. Notice that our current configuration is pre-selected. For our demo, we will use the same shape as the primary, which is the default selection. Click Select Shape to return to the Enable Data Guard page. In the Specify Network Information section, we will select a virtual cloud network from the drop-down list in which to create the DB system containing the standby database. You can click on Change Compartment to select a virtual cloud network that resides in a different compartment. It's important to note that if your primary and standby are going to be in different regions that you will need to configure VCN peering before configuring the Data Guard Association. For our demo, we will select My Demo VCN for a virtual cloud network which exists in our current compartment. Once you select the VCN for the standby database, the available subnets for your standby to attach to will be available by selecting the dropdown you can click on Change Compartment to select a subnet that resides in a different compartment. For our demo, we will select Private Subnet My Demo VCN from the drop-down list. Selecting the Configure Network Security Groups NSG's checkbox allows you to add existing network security groups to your configuration. NSG's function as virtual firewalls, enabling you to apply a set of security rules that control inbound and outbound traffic for the DB system we are creating for the standby database. For our demo, we will leave this selection unchecked. For the hostname prefix field, enter a hostname prefix for the DB system that will contain the standby database. For our demo, we will enter prod2 DB host for the hostname prefix. For the host domain name, note how the subnet DNS and VCN labels from the client network are used to auto-generate the host domain name. The host and domain URL field combines the host prefix 
and the host domain name values to display the fully qualified domain name for the database. In the DataGuard Association Details section, provide the following information. For the DataGuard type, you can select Active DataGuard or DataGuard. Active DataGuard provides additional features including real-time query and DML offload, automatic block repair, standby block change tracking, FarSync, global data services, and application continuity. Note that Active DataGuard requires an Oracle Active DataGuard license. For our demo, we will select Active DataGuard for our DataGuard type. For the protection mode, we have the choice of maximum performance or maximum availability. For our demo, we will select maximum performance from the drop-down list. The redo transport type used for this Oracle Data Guard Association will be selected based on the protection mode selected. Note that the transport type is async based on the selection of maximum performance for the protection mode. In the configure standby database section, you can select a custom database image by clicking on the change database image button. For our demo, we will not use a custom image. Enter the database administrator password of the primary database in the database password field. Note that the standby database admin password must be the same as the primary database admin password. Click Enable Data Guard to proceed. This will cause the database state on the database details page to go from available to updating. When you create the Data Guard Association, the details page for the database and its peer database displays their respective roles as primary or standby. Note that on the database details page, there is now a new database field displayed with a value of primary that did not previously exist. To check the progress of the Data Guard enablement, on the left rail under Resources, click on Data Guard Association. In the Data Guard Association section, you will see that the peer database named My19CCDB being created on a peer DB system named MyDemoDBSysProd2 with a peer database role of Standby. We can also see that the Standby database is being configured in maximum performance protection mode with async for the transport type. When the database status returns to available, click on the pair database name. For our demo, we will click on My19C CDB. This will render the database details page for our standby database. You will notice that the pair database has a status of available and that the database role field has a value of standby and that the data guard selection shows a status of enabled. On the left rail, under Resources, if you click on Data Guard Association, you will see the primary database details shown in the Data Guard Association section. Notice that the peer database role has a value of primary, and that you are provided with the apply lag and the Data Guard type of your standby. And that's it. We have successfully enabled our Data Guard Association for our database. Thank you for watching this demo on how to enable Data Guard for a VMDB system.